Hello and welcome back to On The Workbench. Today we're taking a look at the Cobalt 24 Volt Max Brushless 18 Gauge Brad Nailer. Can you believe it? It is finally here on the workbench. So I was walking around my local Lowe's the other day. You might have seen this on Instagram and they had a few of these in stock. I posted a picture. Did you catch it? Do you follow me on Instagram? Check it out on Instagram. And I walked right by it. And then I saw the other day they had moved this. That was kind of tucked away. They moved this again in store to another place. And the sky has opened up. And I was like, today is going to be the day. It is now very prominently featured off the main aisle, at least in my local neighborhood lows. Your mileage may vary on this tool. As of this time, this is not yet available on the website for purchase. So what do we get? First thing, we've got some straps. Let's cut this off so we can look at the box. So this is a kit that comes with a battery and a charger. This is indeed the 18 gauge Brad Nailer. Instant Fire Cordless Freedom XTR. Looking at the top, nothing really special up here. Let's turn this around to the backside. Like the newer Cobalt packaging, there is no more tool grid that gives us any insight on what might be yet to come in the Cobalt lineup. So in the back here, tool free depth adjustment. Uh, adjustment, dry fire lockout, 110 nail uh, magazine capacity, on off power, dual LED work light, dual trigger mode for sequential or bump mode, and tool free jam release. Air spring technology, tool free depth adjustment, consistent clean nail holes. We'll check that out and see if that's true. And so let's open this up and see what we get in this package. First things first, we've got our manuals. We've got a battery. This has that new 2022 style battery that says Cobalt rather than the Circle K logo. Out of the box, this one has two bars of charge. We have the newer basic charger, if you will. This is the one that has 85 watts. Again, nice update over the previous basic charger. Set that aside. We have the tool. We'll get to that in a second. Also in the box, we have a belt clip. We have some long brad nails. And we have a bag. That's it for the box. We'll set the box aside. And here we go. Here is that fresh tool feeling. We have, I can't believe I'm holding this in my hands, the Cobalt Nailer. Perhaps one of the single most anticipated tool launches in 2022. And so, wow. First thing, this thing feels big and tall. Magazine opens up very easily. I like the work, the work light back here. Nice little touch. Pneumatic tools are not going to have that. On the back side, we've got a chunky bit of a mechanism here. Obviously, this is going to have a motor in it. If you want to see how this operates, take a look. I've got another video. I'll put a card up in the corner that has information all about the patents related to this tool. Open this up and you can see part of that patent in play here on this drive pin. This is the uh, nail jam tool removal. Nice, easy to operate there. We do have a tip, if you will, here, a non-marring tip. And on the side, we have two more right there in case this one gets lost or damaged. Now, in this case here, that non-marring tip is not exactly around the nail, but it's kind of behind it in terms of spacing, because that nail is going to come out right there in that slot. There's another look at the lights. And then the action is going to be back here. We've got an on off switch and then our mode for single or bump fire. XTR logo at the top. Handle. And I'd, be, uh, I'd be curious. I'm not sure I want to take this apart. One of the interesting things in the patent was the ability to add an extra air chamber back here. I'm not sure exactly 
uh, how they implemented everything on this tool. You can see the fan right there as well. So it's interesting they included these nearly two inch long nails. If it were up to me, I probably would have included the one inch nail because I think that's my go-to size with a Brad nailer. Maybe other people's go-to size is the long nails. Obviously your mileage may vary and you can pick up a variety of other sizes in the nailer department at your local store. Something else I'm curious, the bag that they provided. Tool bags are nice, but does the nailer fit in the tool bag? Mm, we're gonna go with what is, mm, kind of, if you don't zip it up. Let's try it sideways. Kind of, kind of. I appreciate the thoughtfulness on including the bag, but clearly this bag is not the right size for this tool. Now for some basic dimensions. This long dimension this way from the very top to the bottom of the nailer comes in right about at 14 inches. If we go from head to tail, we're looking at let me scoot this back for you. We're looking at a just under nine and a half inches. With no battery, it's got kind of an awkward feel. We'll go ahead and put a battery on the nailer. And so since there's no nails in here, it did mention a dry fire lockout. Let me just go ahead and turn this on. There we go, that's on, no work lights yet. Does a half press of the trigger do anything? There we go. In fact, I'm doing a full press, nothing. We got the lights on there and on the other side. That's a really nice touch. I like the light on the nailer. And we'll go ahead and turn that off for the moment. For comparison, I've got this Porter cable I've had for about 10 years at this point, the BN138. This has been my go-to Brad nailer and it's served me well over the last 10 years. Obviously, I try to care for my tools. And there's been some updates that have been made to this. So this is not the latest version of the tool, but it has worked for me flawlessly. And if we just lay these side by side, you can see that from the front to the back, these two tools come in at right about the same size. If we stand them up, there's no question which one is smaller and more compact. However, this one obviously has the bonus feature that you don't have to have a long tail chasing around behind it connected to a compressor, that all that magic should happen right here within the tool itself. Obviously, this is more compact, and depending upon what you believe, if these are uh, free of lubrication or not, I always put a drop of oil on the back end of here just to keep it lubricated to protect the O-rings. A little bit of maintenance required on these pneumatic tools. Got to keep your lines dry and keep your compressor plugged in. You got the length of the cord or, and the length of the hose to follow you around, but they do work well. They're small, they're compact, they're lightweight, they're cheap. And I know a couple guys that work in the trades that say that they're basically easily disposable because of how uh, low cost these tools have become. All right, so I got my wife's kitchen scale making another appearance here. And so we'll go ahead and zero that out and let's weigh how much this tool weighs. So if we look bare tool only, this is coming in at 6.328 pounds. Now let's add the two amp hour battery that came with the tool. And that makes that 7.371 pounds. or 117.9 ounces, or 3,343 grams. So it's quite a bit of heft there. Go back to 7.371 pounds. Hypothetically, if you wanted to try the four amp hour ultimate output battery with this, which it does not come with, but I'm just gonna throw out here just to see what it weighs, 7.922 pounds, so just under eight pounds with the ultimate output battery. Because it's interesting that this is the only XTR tool that does not include a four amp hour battery. 
I think it makes sense because this is a tool that uh, from size and weight perspective, a smaller battery, assuming it performs well enough, should be just fine. Just like on your drill uh, and other uh, tools you hang from your belt, you don't need the biggest battery on those. Those are better saved for other tools that you don't have to carry the whole weight or lift over your head like you might be using the brad nailer for. Something else interesting with this tool, I think, when you look at the manual, and this is really worth checking out here on page 15, there's a whole set of codes for the LED lights on the panel where you power it on and set from sequential to bump that can flash to indicate a jam, nail, mechanical failure, uh, connection failures, electronic component failures, um, or the last one, which is perhaps the most obvious of all, the tool just doesn't work. Battery pack too hot, or the battery pack charge is too low. There are several other combinations here that this is probably worth referring to in the manual, uh, or at least making a mental note, take a picture of it on your cell phone in the event you run into trouble. Hopefully you never have to see any of these flashing light combinations, but this is actually probably worthwhile to look at in the manual on page 15. And now for the part you've probably been waiting for the most to see this in action. First things first, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Get yourself a good pair of safety glasses before doing anything like this with this tool. So today I've got a couple different sizes here we're going to be testing with. The first thing I'm going to try here, I've got some 18 gauge, three quarter inch nails. So this is definitely on the shorter end of the capacity of this. Picked up this uh, when I picked up the nail. Uh, this is a Boss Stitch uh, branded nail. I think that you can also get the same thing with the Craftsman branding on it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and I'm going to take one stick of these 5 8 nails. Slide this open with no battery attached. Make sure I get the head side up. Slide that right down into the tray. Like that. So now to test, I've got a strip of quarter inch thick red oak and a two by three just scrap that I've used for painting. And now with the nailer loaded with nails, we'll go ahead and attach the battery. Always make sure when you load this up that your battery is off. Simple way to reduce just any ma matter of stupid failures. Go ahead and hit the button back here to turn it on. And this, in terms of mode, is on single fire mode at the moment. We'll go ahead and hopefully you can see. So I've got it on, but the lights are not on yet on the tool. If I tap this down, the light there just turned on. Hopefully you can see that. Now I'll go ahead and pull the trigger. All right, so that was a pretty quick reaction. Let's check and see. Obviously, I haven't uh, adjusted or fiddled with the depth stop yet. So that is just a little bit proud of the surface there. Obviously, there's going to be some taste for exactly how deep you want to set these. And so I'm going to go ahead and try to set it a little bit deeper. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this dial here to the right and try to go a little deeper. Let's go again. I like how quick that is. That's very impressive. And now that's just below the face. So I could fine tune that based on my material combination. Obviously, I've got hardwood and softwood here. No split out going there. Let's just do a few more of these and see what we can do in single shot. Looking at this, no problem. Uh, they're all set to about the same depth. One is just maybe a little slightly deeper than the other ones. Uh, as far as I can tell, no real marring to this red oak finish here. Now, I don't know that you'd really be using brad nails on a fine piece of finishing. You might be going for 23 gauge brad nail or 23 gauge pin nails if you're doing some of the red oak, but I'm just trying to just put this through a few quick tests here to see how it performs. And now let's change this now to bump fire and see how it goes. Move this back. Okay, so that's really nice and quick and very responsive on bump fire. Let's check to see how these nails look 
And it looks like most of these are set to a fairly consistent depth. In all fairness, there's gonna be some user variability depending upon exactly how much downward force I was exerting with the tool. Now let's change this up here. I'm gonna put the, this dry side of this pine piece up here and we'll see how that performs. So we're going to straight into pine with nothing else that we're attaching to it. Unsurprisingly, these are setting deeper. This is a softer material than that red oak we had before. So let me try to dial that back to have that sit a little bit closer to the surface. We'll see if that did anything. I'm gonna switch this back to single mode. And you can see right there, what did I do? I pulled the trigger first and then depressed it and it didn't fire because that was an invalid combination. Nice safety measure there in single mode. Go ahead and push it down. Now I will pull the trigger. And so that's a little bit higher. Let me try to adjust this again. All right, I've got this set to be maximum height, if you will, or the least deep nail drive. And we'll see how that performs here on this pine. And that is definitely proud of the surface. So I should be able to dial this in with a little bit more trying. Make one more adjustment, maybe about like that. All right, that is now about perfectly flush. It's a little bit of adjustment with this depth adjustment uh, thumb screw here. I should get you set. I think that's gonna be true of any nailer that you've got. You're gonna have to make sure you get that right. The other thing that I'm noticing, just looking at the way this tip is set relative to the uh, toe of the nailer here, I'm gonna put this at a slight angle here. And so the, my last one was flush with the surface. And now that I held it at an angle, you can see it's definitely proud of the surface. So this is not gonna be very forgiving because of how far back this sits from where the nail comes out uh, for making sure that you actually get this square onto the surface you're trying to nail. Just something to pay attention to. Just for reference, if I look at my pneumatic nailer, this is not hooked up, but you can see where this is behind it, but it wraps right around it and it's a little bit closer together for identifying where the nail is gonna be coming out. So in this case here, I like the fact that it's gray because really you have to be looking at that nose to know where your nailer is coming out. On this cobalt here, don't look at the blue tip for your nail. You gotta make sure you look at the front and make sure that you hold this square and you can see just how thick this is around us here for the metal. It should be make it nice and durable, but just make sure you get it square to the surface. Otherwise, when you think it's gonna be uh, sunk properly, it might come up a little proud, but that's not that big of a deal. Hopefully not that big of a deal. You can just go ahead and take a punch and then finish that off. Obviously when you're going for a nailer, you're hoping to avoid having to break out the manual hammer. Now we're going to switch nail sizes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the battery off. Just after all that testing, let's see where we're at. We're still at a full four bars of charge. And now the other thing that I have here is a set of two inch boss stitch 18 gauge brad nails. We'll take the remaining slug of three quarter inch brads and put those back in the box or in the case here. And now we'll break out these two inch brad nails. And so this is sitting right at that maximum height, the brad nail that you can use with this. It's also worth me pointing out that these two inch brad nails I have in here do not work in this Porter cable. This only goes up to an inch and five eighths. So this is actually designed uh, for much larger, deeper nails. So now to test this, I've got another two by three scrap. I'm gonna lay down here like this. And we're gonna see if we can affix these together 
with these two inch nails, because we've got, here we've got our inch and a half, inch and a half, so that's three inches of material plus our quarter inch uh, piece of oak there. So now I'm gonna go ahead with those two inch brad nails in here, reattach my battery, power it back on. Remember, you gotta press that electronic power button there. It doesn't turn on when you connect the battery. That's a safety feature. If I do a half press on the trigger or a full press when the nailer is not touching, again, you can see that light comes on. Or, let me just do this, turn this around the other way, unplug the battery, plug it back in, turn it on, the light gets activated by simply tapping that trigger toe down. So I'm not really sure exactly how this is gonna be on the depth that's on here. We'll give it a shot. As is true with any nailer, you're gonna to have to have a test piece or something that you can fire in to get your depth correct. And we'll see how this performs going through a piece of oak and two two by threes. We're in single shot mode here. And so it got through and I should have went a little deeper, but it kind of flaked off here and there really wasn't much to make it all the way through. This is still just a little proud of the surface there. Let's see if we can try that again. I'm gonna move this off to the side here. I can probably press these together like that by hand. And then I'm gonna set this down a little bit deeper I mean, obviously this is driving a much longer nail. So I'm gonna set this to go to maximum depth and see where that gets me. So that is through the oak and that is driven all the way down into the surface there. Now let's go ahead and try this going with no oak in between. And at maximum drive depth, that is now definitely below the surface. And that is, as you can tell, they're fully seated and well connected. Better than what was up above going through the oak trim and the two two by threes right there. Let's get some more scrap. All right, so now I've got a couple of, I've got a two by four piece of scrap and a two by six piece of scrap. This is some pressure treated wood. You can see I've been using this as a riser block for some painting and, some, and from some staining here. So I'm just using some scrap wood here. We'll start to try to connect these together and see what we can get. We'll go with the same settings as before. Clearly made a positive connection. Let's go back the other way. You can see there's our pressure treated material there. Take a look at that spot there. That's actually looking pretty good. Obviously I can adjust and make that a little bit higher instead of having that all the way down. I'll make that just a little bit more proud to try to bring that a little bit closer to the surface. Looks like I've got some more adjustment here. And let's do a little bit more. There we go, that's just right above the surface. We'll bring it down. And hopefully this will be it. There we go, nice and flush to the surface. Very happy about that. You can see so far, no problem driving in. Now let's go to bump fire mode. So this should be the upper end of the stress test. It looks like it did, it did just fine with the three quarter inch nails, but how will it do with the two inch brad nails? In bump fire mode, you can see hopefully there, we got the LED down at the bottom. And we're gonna go ahead and start this out here. I'm gonna go ahead and start by pulling the trigger. So even at the maximum length of nail, no problem. And these are all set to just about the same depth. So it's being consistent. I like that. 
There is one that I got that it did tear out the side, so you can see this has a tendency to bend to the left for the way that this is set to be able to drive the nail. Always good to know that for which way a nail is apt to bend coming out of the tool, because that tells you something if you're, if you're angling or if you're driving near a corner or some other small piece of trim for exactly how you might want to manipulate it and set it up so that if it does exit the piece, that it's not tearing out of your piece of trim. So speaking of trim, so I've got a little piece here, about three quarter by three quarter inch pine. This is just a square piece here. And we're gonna try to affix that here. Now two inches might be a little bit overkill for this. Probably would go with maybe inch and a quarter, inch and a half instead of two inch nails on this. And also don't know if I'd be using this for trim. But again, I'm just trying to simulate a variety of applications and combinations here for you, just so you can kind of box in and see how this tool performs for you today. We'll go ahead here with those two inch nails on this pine trim. So previously this was adjusted to be going through the pressure treated and now going into the pine, which is significantly softer. This is a much softer pine and it is sitting below the surface and it's damaged a little bit, but only damaged in the spot where the driving mechanism is pushing it down. So there's no really any extra damage. The tip or the little drive protector there in blue is doing its job. I'm not seeing any marks left over from that uh, or from the rest of this mechanism for that matter uh, at the toe. So that's really nice to see. Let's go ahead and back this off a bit so we can get that maybe a little closer to flush. And I'm gonna change this back to single fire mode. That's just a little proud. We'll try that. Just a little proud more, we'll dial it back a little more. We think we can go just maybe just a touch more. So this is definitely adjustable. Let me see if I can tweak that just one more shot here for you. So there's my last shot there. That's just right at the surface. So you can see there's quite a bit of variability and great control. It's not really damaging the surface. Now, obviously you can create more damage if you just start jamming down on this. But one of the advantages of this being heavy, especially if you're going downward, is you can let the weight of the tool help you when you're going to press it down. Because with basically no force, I can let go of this by hand and not press down and, it'll, and it will depress that actuation foot there just by the sheer weight of the tool. I don't have to press down any harder than that. And the weight of the tool can do that all for me. Because I obviously could put my other hand up here and just simply jam this around, push it down, hold it, and make this even worse. So just for example, I'm gonna try to push down here on top. And what went from being basically flush before now went down to being below the surface, and there's a little divot there. So obviously the amount of downward pressure you use, the angle that you hold this out to the surface is gonna affect your final product. You're not using a brad nailer for detailed fine finishing like I've said several times before. And so, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with this from Cobalt. All right, so now to wrap up. Looking at this tool, there's a lot to like about it. Few bits of concerns with it. But I think when you look at this just on balance, this seems to be performing really well. I'm really impressed with how fast that this can respond once you turn it on. There was barely any ramp up time and nothing that was noticeable at all. That really gets my attention right there. I think there's something to be said for that. Some other competitor cordless nailers have seen issues for what the ramp up time is. And obviously I think that's getting better as, technolo as technology progresses. But the fact that there's barely any ramp up time at all, that, that is a, an achievement right there on itself. I like the LED lights. I can see where that could be useful. 
uh, especially if you're working in a closet or you're trying to do something else. Like if you're like one of the applications I'll have coming up for this is I'm gonna be adding a cedar lining to a closet in my basement. I'm not quite there yet ready for that house project, but that's coming up soon. And that's something I anticipate using this tool on uh, to be able to put those cedar planks up uh, in that basement closet. And in that closet, I don't have an extra light. So having a light right there, I think that's gonna come in mighty handy. Obviously, in other situations, you could care less about the LED lights. Take it or leave it. Better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Obviously, the biggest con on this tool is going to be the weight and just that sheer size. There may be some locations that you can't get this into that you would like to, or you just have to use your wrist to be able to manage the tool. When it comes to how it feels balanced in the hand, is it top heavy or not? I'm going to turn this off here. And if I just hold my, this one finger right here, you can see like this, it balances relatively well. It's not too front heavy or back heavy with a two amp hour battery. So that makes that a pretty reasonable size. So if you need to be nailing vertically into a surface, that's gonna be reasonably well balanced like that, all things considered. And if you're driving down, if we hold, if I put a finger right here, really a finger right here on the trigger, or somewhere right in here on that trigger, it's gonna lean back just a bit. You put another finger behind it and move it just right back. That balance point is right here on the back end of that trigger. So they really thought about balancing this, I think, uh, in your hand to accommodate the extra size and mass of the tool. Is it gonna be the perfect tool for everybody? Of course not. And like any other nailer, you're gonna to have to make some adjustments here on the depth, that's true whether you're pneumatic or you're cordless or anything else, always gotta make sure you get that depth dialed in on a piece of scrap. So for the $239 that this was in store, um, I think this is, is exciting. I'm probably not gonna put a belt hook on this, but maybe I will later. I'm not jumping uh, at the bit to have something uh, on my hip uh, like this yet, but we'll see. Um, so overall, yeah, this is great. I wish it were a little bit skinnier, a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact, but I mean, I'll take it so that we finally have a nailer in the Cobalt tool lineup. This has been a glorious day and has been a long time coming. Santa baby forgot to mention one little thing. A 24 volt cobalt nailer. Any time now would be grand, Santa baby. So hurry to my garage tonight. I've seen the comments, seen other places on the internet. Everyone's been asking about the Brad nailer. Here it is. Obviously, the next question is what's coming up next? I personally would love to see a stapler. So if you're putting up insulation, then you'd be able to uh, do that task as well. So it'll be interesting to see what Cobalt comes out with next. Based on the patents that I've found, I suspect there's more nailers, staplers uh, coming. At what point? I have no idea. Your guess is as good as mine, but I think that the fact that we've got this here today, well, that's a big check. So that's exciting. So now if you've got any questions or comments about this tool, go ahead and put in the comments down below. If you liked today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I've got a playlist of other Cobalt tool reviews uh, and opinions. I'll, this will obviously be part of that playlist. Check it out. Thanks for watching today, and as always, have a great day. Bye.